Hey, 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 everyone. I hope that you are having a wonderful day today. I was trying, I was having difficulty connecting already. I know that um, spirits, demonic spirits are all over the place today. Let me tell you, um, your friend has gotten attacked big time, big time, big time, because the enemy doesn't want me to talk about this. Uh, he just does not want me um, teaching you guys about witchcraft. And it's so important because we need to be able to discern witchcraft. We need to be able to know what to do and how to um, discern it. How to know when the, when it is the Spirit of the Living God and when it is not the Spirit of the Living God. And so, praise God for today. Uh, praise God that I'm able to connect with you guys on this beautiful, beautiful Saturday. Um, it has been a battle. Let me tell you, I have not slept in a few days. Because it has been such a battle uh, coming against me. Because I want to teach you guys about this. And praise God that um, my God is victorious. And he is an amazing, amazing warrior. Uh, so I have been prayed up um, all day today and just praying about this video because um, people need to know the truth. People need to be delivered. People need to be able to discern and see the enemy when it's coming, how he's using people. And today, praise God, hopefully with what I'm about to teach you, you, you are able to point those things out, uh, whether it is in the church, in the workplace, in out and about areas, uh, wherever you might find yourself in. If you're a child of the mighty and, and living God, um, you have the upper hand, okay? You have victory. You are victorious in Christ Jesus. And all these spirits, all these spirits that are out there, they have to submit to the spirit of the living God. So I hope that you guys are ready for this. For those of you that will connect now and for those of you that will connect later, we are going to be talking about witchcraft and familiar spirits. Um, those two things are not too much of a difference between the two because um, witchcraft, um, when, when it comes to witchcraft, they use familiar spirits. That's just the truth of the matter. Um, so we are going to go to prayer real quick. And we are going to just ask the Lord to come and invade our surrounding um, this broadcast. And every single one of you that connect now or, or that will listen to me later it really doesn't make, make a difference. Um, I just pray that this video will impact you and it will show you how easy the enemy can trick us and 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 infiltrate in our lives so let's go to the lord in prayer father in the mighty name of jesus i just ask you to come down in a powerful manner lord holy spirit just come and fill this place fill this broadcast touch every person father god that will listen to this video that if they are involved in these things because it's so easily for someone to get involved in these things father god that father that you will touch their heart and that they will come to repentance in the by the power of the holy ghost that you will touch them with your love and with your grace today lord god Father, I speak freedom in every person, Lord God, that, that hears and that sees this video, Lord Jesus. Just touch them today. I bind every demonic entity that would interfere with this video, Lord God. I know the enemy is mad, Father God. I know that he's kicking and, and screaming, Father God, because they don't want people to know the truth. But by God's grace, they are going to know the truth and the truth set us free. So I give you glory today. I give you honor. I give you praise. Just fill this place up, Lord God. Let every word that comes out of my mouth come straight from your throne, Lord Jesus. And Father God, give people revelation and understanding of your word and, and how to counteract the spirits, Lord God. How to fight back these things, Father God, that the enemy sends against us. So I give you glory, Father. I give you honor and I give you praise for all that you are doing, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So... Um, as I was searching uh, information about about um, familiar spirits and witchcraft, 
Um, I found so much information. There's so much scripturally um, that talks about this that it just blew my mind. God has so much to say about witchcraft and familiar spirits that is unbelievable to me. So, um, as I was searching, it caught my attention um, that in Deuteronomy, no, excuse me, in Exodus, when Moses was confronting Pharaoh, uh, Moses, uh, God told Moses, if Pharaoh asks you to do a miracle, go ahead and do it. But Pharaoh uh, relied on his prophets, which were uh, the prophets of Satan, and they did exactly the same thing that Moses did, which is incredible i actually was like wow god this is this is interesting because how do you know which one is from god and which one is not if they did the same thing just something to ponder about and something to think about in our time we have a lot of people saying you know i'm a child of god i'm i'm this i'm that i'm the other but at the end of the day we have to have discernment and the power of the Holy Spirit living in us in order to discern and to know who is a child of God and who's not. And there is so much information out there. It's crazy. So as we go forward with this, um, and for those of you that want to know, probably asking yourselves, um, why am I covering my head? Why do I cover my head in prayer? Number one, today's teaching is, is a powerful teaching because we're talking about witchcraft. And witchcraft is so rampant in our time um, that I wanted to make sure that I establish and I let any demonic entity or any spirit that's out there in the airways who my authority is. Uh, when a woman covers her head, when she prays and when she prophesies, she's to cover her head. And that establishes authority, the authority of Jesus Christ over her head um, in the spiritual realm. It, it sends out a message. For those of you that want to know, it sends out a message in the spiritual realm that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is my covering, is, my, is the one who covers my head. So that's the reason why I cover my head when I do some of these videos, especially when it comes to dealing with um, the spiritual realm and the spirit of darkness. I want to make sure that they, they know. And I know they know, but I want to make sure that they know that I belong to God. So, that's the reason why I cover my head. And if you want to find this scripturally, it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You can find this for yourselves. It says that a woman, when she prays and she prophesies, she needs to cover her head. Okay? So, anyways, you can look that up at a later time. So, let's get back to our teaching of witchcraft. I want to read to you out of Exodus chapter 7, verse 8 and 13. And listen, there is so much scripture about this. That is just too much for me to compile for a video. Um, my last video was uh, 47 minutes talking about this. So I hope that uh, with you guys I can move a little bit faster so that you can understand what God has to say about this. So Exodus chapter 7, verse 8 through 13, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Okay? And Moses and Aaron went in, to, uh, went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. This is very important because he, instead of relying on Moses and the spirit of the living God that was upon Moses, he called the sorcerers, okay? Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod. And, um, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said. So, it's kind of interesting to me that I was doing some research about witchcraft and about familiar spirits. That here in Exodus... 
the the prophets of Baal, okay, because those were the sorcerers that, that worked for Pharaoh, did exactly the same thing that Moses did. The only difference was that the the snake or the serpent that belonged to God ate the other serpent. Okay? Which in reality they will God will always have authority over anything that crawls and, and, and is on this earth. Okay? Any spirit that is loose out there, God has authority over it. However, when it comes to people, I found it kind of interesting that what Moses did, so did the sorcerers. Okay? They did the exact same thing that God told Moses to do. And because of that, Pharaoh did not hearken unto them. Wow! Incredible to me because in our time, there's so much stuff out there about information about God, about those who are children of God, about those that are preaching, that it's hard to tell who belongs to God and who's not. But praise God because the Holy Spirit is our guide. The Holy Spirit said, I will guide you into all truth. Okay? All truth. So, if the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, that means that your discernment in the Holy Spirit will tell you when you are in the presence of someone that does not belong to the Lord. And, and this is interesting to me. They were able to do the exact same miracles. And I said to the Lord, oh my word, Father, this is incredible. And the Lord said, yeah. They did the exact same miracle. And because of this, they did the exact same miracles... Pharaoh and the Egyptians did not hearken unto. In other words, they did not hear. They couldn't hear the voice of God. They did not hearken unto Moses and what Moses was telling them to do. So it was it was interesting to me that I wanted to open our teaching about witchcraft from that perspective because I want God to enhance your discernment that is that is my my goal today my goal is that the discernment of the spirit of the living god inside of you would grow into a new level to know that when you see <coughs> excuse me to know when you see a man or a woman of god what is the difference between the two you we have got to know okay we have got to know you have to be able to hear and hearken onto the Lord. And God has people out there um, that are actually preaching the truth. They're not necessarily in the church. You don't have to be in the church to be a child of God. The Word of God says that the body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? And people make up the church. People from different nations, different languages, different backgrounds, different areas make up the church of Jesus Christ. That is a revelation. So, you know, we need to understand what what how can we recognize when we are in the presence of of a real prophet and we are in the presence of a fake prophet or I just say a prophet of Satan okay um let me tell y'all something about witchcraft I have gotten to know so much about witchcraft because I have experienced it firsthand um there's so much information out there about witchcraft and there's different back there's different um meanings of witchcraft but i want to give you guys the basic understanding of what witchcraft truly is okay now the methods and all this other stuff are are things that people reach out to when they cannot get their way that's 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 basically it okay but Witchcraft, the basic bottom line meaning of witchcraft is when a person wants to break the will of God, okay? When a person wants to break the will of God off of your life to manipulate and to uh, do whatever it is that they want to do with you. Or in your life, or in your ministry, or in in the church vicinity that you're in, wherever you find yourself in, wherever God has established you, okay. The basic meaning of witchcraft is the breaking of the will of God in your life by a person 
or someone, okay, who has familiar spirits, okay, or whose heart is not in the right place with God. I want you guys to really understand this because a lot of people think that witchcraft is all this stuff. You got to do this, you got to do that. Not necessarily. If someone has an evil heart or evil intentions towards you, okay, evil intentions towards you, um, they can use, or oh, let me go back, it can open the person up to familiar spirits to make you submit to what they want to do. It's to break the will of God within you, off of you, to take you to wherever they want to take you. And not only that, but to make you fall from the grace of God. To make you fall from the calling that God has in your life. Okay? That is witchcraft. That is the basic bottom line meaning of witchcraft. It's another individual's intentions to break, to break the will of God off of your life. And to make you fall off of the grace of God. Or to completely take you out of the will of God. Now, this is interesting because when people do this they open themselves up to different type of spirits okay um, and we're gonna talk about the different type of spirits that are used for witchcraft and the different type of te techniques that can be used by witchcraft but I'm also gonna take it a step farther and talk about some things that in our time it it's rampant in our time it is rampant it's everywhere it is everywhere I mean, witchcraft, spells, enchantments, all that stuff is everywhere in our time. And we need to know how to fight these things and how not to allow these things to come in our house and come in our family and come in our, in our, in our, in our, in our space, okay? Um, let's go. I want to read to you uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 through 14. And this is what, what it says. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Okay? There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Okay? Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Mm. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God has not suffered thee so to do. In other words, we're not supposed to be in all this stuff. We're not supposed to be involved in all this stuff. Okay? However... In our time, all these spirits, divination, a server of time, enchanters, witches, are in the church. In the church. And I've had some experiences where I was like, what in the world just happened, God? What, what happened? Wasn't the shepherd supposed to protect the sheep? Isn't the shepherd of a church supposed to protect the sheep? And the word of God says that when one of his sheep goes wandering out, the shepherd is to go get that sheep. So, what has happened in the church in our time that the sheep, God, this is interesting, God, Almighty God is calling out his sheep from under the church. Why? Because when God sees that these spirits have infiltrated the church and has set up authority positions in that church. Um, I learned a long time ago that whatever you have in you is what you project out. 
Okay? So, if you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you cannot give the Holy Spirit. That's truth. If the Holy Spirit in if the Holy Spirit does not live inside of you, you cannot give or you cannot uh how do I put it because a lot of people might, are going to say, Amelie, what are you talking about? I'm going to give you an example. When you are mature in the Lord, you build your brothers and sisters in maturity. Okay? You build them up in maturity. As the Holy Spirit speaks through you, as the Holy Spirit manifests himself on you, then the people that are connected to you will grow up in maturity. Will grow in maturity. Okay? The same thing happens when the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you give the Holy Spirit. In other words, you lead these people onto the knowledge of Christ and onto repentance so that they can receive the Holy Spirit. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't, you can't, you can't give the Holy Spirit. You can't lead these people to receive the Holy Spirit, okay? So whatever is in you is what you are going to give. It's what you are going to project out of you. And it's important that in our time, um, these people that have that have found, you know, uh, positions of authority in the churches that are filled with all these demonic spirits, familiar spirits, um, and stuff like that, they project this stuff out onto the people, okay? If you have... A pastor in an authority position who is in sexual immorality, guess what? That's what he's going to project is sexual immorality. And then before you know it, you have a bunch of people in the church who are married committing adultery. Why? The authority over your church is someone who has a familiar spirit, who has sexual immorality that has not been dealt with. In other words, this person have not crucified the flesh, okay, onto the submission and the authority of Christ. And now you have 50 marriages in the church that are falling apart on adultery. Why? Because whatever the pastor has is what he gives. Whatever the authority in that place, whatever the authority it is about over that place, that is what you project out. So, when it comes to familiar spirits and witchcraft and all this stuff, you don't have to be doing voodoo to be a witch. You don't have to be doing um, enchantments and stuff like that to be a witch. You don't have to be doing all this stuff to be a witch or to be a, a, a warlock. Okay? All you have to do is not have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the Spirit of the living God inside of you, okay? And project your own will, okay? God has His will, but we also have a will. In order for us to, to, to do the will of God, we have to submit our will, in other words, the person will, onto the, the Spirit of God's will, Okay? But you have these people in authority position that they want to do their will. And what happens is it invites all these demonic spirits into the church, into the vicinity, into the workplace. Okay? And before you know it, you have chaos, you have um, disorder, you have confusion in the place. Why do those things happen? Because the authority over that place has invited all this stuff. All these spirits, okay? Just like you have doorways in your house, and I've said this before, just like you have doorways in your house, your body, your, your spiritual body has doorways too. Depending on what you say, and depending on... Oh, Jesus. Depending on what you say, and depending on what you do, give um, these spirits the right to come and do in your life. That's why it's so important. The Word of God says, whatever you speak, the tongue is the most powerful being, the most powerful organ in your body. Because you can either speak life or you can speak death. Whatever comes out of your mouth, either the angels of God and the Spirit of God hears what you're saying and they go and do, or Satan and his angels hear what you're saying and they go and do. Okay? So, if, you, if you're attracted to... Um, to lust, guess what? That's exactly what you're going to attract, is lust. Okay? All this stuff 
okay, gives an open door for the enemy to come into our lives, okay? The same thing happens in the church. The same thing happens in a person's spiritual life. I want to read to you guys uh, Revelation chapter 21. Oh, Lord, hold on a second because I just lost my English translation here. Where did you go? You know what? Let's look it up. Revelation 21 uh, verse 8. The enemy already messing with me today. And um, he's already mad because he didn't want me to teach this. So, um, if you're there, you, you got it. Revelation 21 verse 8. This is what it says. I found it. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, abominable murderers, sexual immorality, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All these people, okay, that are doing all this stuff are going to have to go through the fire. They're going to have to go through. Because they have allowed the enemy to, um, I found it right there, Jesus. They have allowed the enemy to infiltrate all these places, okay? Now, I want you to, to, to hear this. I want you to hear the 2 Timothy 3, 8. Um, the names of the two prophets that Pharaoh called on and did all these things, their names was James and Jambres. Okay? And 2 Timothy 3 verse 8 says, Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Oh my word. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. What faith is, is, is Timothy talking about? The faith of Jesus Christ. Okay? The faith that through grace you have been saved. Okay? And that through the power of the Holy Spirit you are walking in this life under the submission of the Lord. Okay? And in Galatians chapter 5 you can go there and look at the, uh, the corruption of the flesh. And again, again, in Galatians chapter 5, God says, if you do these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, um, we, need, we need to really be, wake up, wake up, be aware of what's going on. Now, let's talk about the spirits, the different spirits that are out there. Okay? And I'm going to read to you straight out of the King James Version Bible. Look at right here. You can look at the notes. This is straight out of the King James Bible, okay? The occult. The word of occult is derived from the Latin word occultus, which means something hidden or concealed, referring to that which is in the inner or the secret, mysterious, and beyond the range of ordinary human knowledge. Occultism involves various types of secret techniques directed are altering human consciousness and manipulating the supernatural in order to attain psycho-spiritual powers. Oh, my word. And then it goes into white and black magic. It goes into fortune telling. All these are common forms of witchcraft. All these are fo they're, they're common forms of witchcraft, okay? And on here, I want to read this one part where it says, it ceremonially evokes spirits and seeks to control them with such ritual tools as wands, daggers, robes, and belts. Okay? Um, and I'm going to talk about some experiences that I've had. Now I want to go into the different type of spirits. Spiritism. Making contact with disease or invisible personalities through spirit mediums. Okay? In other words, invoking the dead. Um... You can look this up in 1 Samuel 28, verse 3 through 20. This is a form of voluntary possession. In other words, these people are okay with having demonic entities possess them. Okay? Fortune telling is, is a spirit of divination using a wide variety of methods and objects to give advice. You can look this up in Acts 16, verse 16 through 18. 
Astrology, the ancient method of mapping celestial events by means of horoscopes. Those of you that listen to horoscopes, that is witchcraft, okay? You can look that up in Isaiah um, 47, verse 13 through 15, and Daniel verse 2, or chapter 2, verse 2, and Daniel chapter 5, verse 7. Numerology, which attaches special significance to numbers and, the use, and uses those numbers to analyze character and to predict the future. Oh my gosh. Genesis 41, 1 through 36. Palmistry, which is the reading of the palms. It analyzes the lines of your hands to tell you what the future holds for you. Okay, that's palmistry. Witchcraft. Uh, tarot cards. Go into some woman to read some cards to you and use those symbols to tell you what the future holds. Witchcraft. Automatic writing in which a participant writes in a trance-like state without conscious control. Let me pause there. Um, in psychology, they're using hypnosis, okay? I don't believe in hypnosis. And I, I, I've been studying psychology from a, from a counseling perspective. I don't believe in hypnosis. I don't agree with it because you're giving your conscious right for someone to go in there without you having full control. Don't agree with that. It's witchcraft. It opens you up to different type of spirits, people. Okay? Opens you up to different type of spirits. Listen to what 1 Timothy chapter 4 uh, verse 1 through 5 says. Now the spirit hearken exp speaketh, excuse me. Now the spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. I want you to get this. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What is this talking about? Okay. Horoscope. Doctrines of devils. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about here um, is martial arts. Okay. Martial arts uses the hand movement and different hand signals to open you up to familiar spirits. Very important. A lot of people are using much of us for protection. Listen, if you are a child of the living God, God protects you. Okay? And the things that he allows is to teach you something. So, you, we need to understand these things. Okay? Martial arts opens you up to familiar spirits. Eventually, with time, after you reach a level of maturity, you become a warlock and you become a witch. Point blank, period. That's just the bottom line. Um... Another one that I was talking about earlier was yoga. Yoga, the forms that you sit, is worshiping different type of gods. Jesus, Jesus. Uh, yoga, the different body, um, body positions, okay, is worshiping different type of gods. That's idolatry, okay? Again, teachings of devils, okay? It opens you up to familiar spirits. Uh, verse 2 says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. And it goes on to about marriage. It goes on about eating and, and, and you know, people that are saying, oh, you can't eat meat. That's a, a whole bunch of mess. Don't get into that. Do not get into that. What I want to share with you real quick is how do these spirits manifest themselves, okay? One of the things that I have found um, um, seducing spirits, okay, or familiar spirits can manifest themselves in sexual assault in your dreams, okay? If you find yourself having dreams or having sexual uh, encounters or intercourse or something like that with different people in your dreams, those are familiar spirits. Those are um, the spirit of incubus and succubus, okay? They come to take advantage of you in your dreams. And, oh, by the way, if you say Jesus in those dreams, or, or as you waking up, you say, Jesus, help me, all these experiences stop, okay? They stop. They completely go away. Why? Because those spirits have to submit at the name of Jesus, Okay, uh, another thing about the spirit of witchcraft, how does the spirit of witchcraft manifest itself? Okay, the spirit of witchcraft can manifest itself as a black cat. If you don't have cats, you'll, you'll pick up on it right away. You can only see them through the peripheral vision. 
okay? And they'll come in, whether it's for the win from a window, a door, or whatever, and they manifest themselves as a black cat. That's a spirit. It is a witch. It's a witch or warlock sending witchcraft your way, okay? I know a lot of you are thinking, I made you crazy. I'm telling you, these things are real. Um, another thing that God has revealed to me is, and I felt to myself, uh, when you feel um, stabbings, like you're fine and all of a sudden you feel stabbings in certain areas of your body, those are witchcraft prayers being sent against you, okay? Someone around you is practicing witchcraft and they're sending this stuff against you. If you're a child of God, believe me, you're going to have plenty of people who are going to hate you. That's the bottom line. You are going to have plenty of people whose heart is not going to be for you. And believe you me, they will send things your way. They will speak things out of their mouth. And you will feel these things. One of the things that God has revealed to me is send it back. Whoever is speaking witchcraft over you, when I feel those stabbings, Father, I send it back a thousandfold in the mighty name of Jesus. I can't receive it. You have to know how to fight these things, okay? People get killed every day by other people who send witchcraft and stuff against them. Because they don't know how to fight it. You have to know how to fight this stuff. You have to know how to not allow the enemy to infiltrate your life. Okay? One of the things that I have, I have found out is when you are a true child of God and you have a purpose and a plan, the enemy will send people your way to pull you out from that will and that purpose in God. And one of the ways that he'll do it is he'll try to get you to um, to fall in love or like somebody, whatever you want to call it, and go into sexual immorality with them, okay? A lot of people can use this as a form of witchcraft, okay? The bottom line is if you're having sex outside of marriage, it's not from God. I I'm, I'm going to be straight honest with you all. That is not from God, okay? And you need deliverance from that. So if that's happening, it's not from God. And if you have someone who's coming to you and that's what they want to do, I'm telling you right now, it's not from God and it's someone sent to make you fall from the grace of God. You have to be careful with this stuff. But I hope that this stuff has helped you because there's so much out there, you need to know how to discern this stuff. And I, I fought this week like a crazy person because all these demons have just... I mean, they they have hound me. I'm going to tell you right now. They have just literally targeted me because of this video. You need to know how to discern witchcraft. And witchcraft basically is anybody that is trying to make their will happen in your life against yours. And against the will of God in your life. That's witchcraft. Point blank, period. So... Know that there are people out there whose heart are dark and who say, who's been used by Satan himself. There are people out there. So I hope that this has helped you. If you are in any of this stuff, horoscopes, martial arts, uh, in the book of Acts, there's a story where Paul went into a city and after the people had repented, they got rid of all this stuff and they burnt it in, in the yard, okay, or out in the public. If you're involved in all this stuff, anything related to this stuff needs to be burnt. Witchcraft. Um, in our time, you have Harry Potter teaches witchcraft. Uh, Hocus Pocus teaches witchcraft. Um, there are so many movies out there. Um, so many books out there teaching our kids witchcraft. It's witchcraft. I don't care how you look at it. It's witchcraft. And it opens your child to this stuff. Okay? Spirit of divination. Uh, it's familiar spirits and stuff like that. It opens your child to all this stuff. Be careful what you allow in your house, what you allow in your life. This, I just felt the Lord tell me you need to teach about witchcraft, and I have done that. You can find, I mean, scriptures after scriptures about witchcraft and familiar spirits. If you're interested in that, look them up online. It's not that hard. Anyways, I love you guys. I hope that this has helped you. If you're involved in this stuff, repent. Repent, repent, and get rid of all that stuff and burn it. 
repent and get rid of all that stuff and burn it. No matter how much money you have spent, your salvation is worth more than whatever amount of money that you can burn in your backyard. Just being truthful. So, if you in this stuff, repent. The Lord is coming soon. Repent. 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 I love you guys. I hope that, that this has helped you. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Think about what I, we, what I talked about. And again, if you're involved in any other stuff, it's time to repent. It's time to repent. And tell the Holy Spirit to come and fill you up and fill your house and fill your mind and fill your spirit. Just fill you up. And give you discernment, a double amount of discernment to know, to know the truth. I love you guys. Have a great night. Have a great evening. Uh, let's pray before we, before I end this broadcast. Father God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your revelation. We thank you for understanding, Father. Father, I speak a double amount of discernment to every person that listens to the vi this video, Lord God. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you guide them into all truth. Father, your word says that the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. So, Father God, I ask you to guide every person into all truth, to know the truth, because the truth is what sets us free. So, Father, I ask you that if there's any individual, Father God, that have listened to this message that is involving witchcraft or anything involving familiar spirits, Father God, that you will touch their hearts, Father God, and that they will come to the repentance of knowing Jesus Christ. And fill them up, Father, with your Holy Spirit. And, Father God, guide them into all truth and keep them and protect them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I give you glory for this day and for every person that will hearken to your voice and your truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Um, for those of you, just have a great weekend. Have a great night. I've been on it for about 40 minutes. Just go through this video and listen through the whole thing. This is about witchcraft and familiar spirits and how we open ourselves up to those things. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great night. And I will talk to you guys later. Love you.